So we can all agree that Demon Slayers is one big JoJo's reference, right? Demons are basically vampires and total concentration breathing is basically Hama. And plus, they both have pillars. But Tanjiro and the gang are seriously behind the times. I mean, Tanjiro and Inosuke haven't even seen a train before, let alone Stando Power. I feel like that was kind of bad. Well, we saved them the trouble and gave them their very own stance. Tanjiro's a man on a mission to turn his sister Nezuko back into a human. But in order to do that, he's got to kick a lot of demon ass. But like, like in a gentle way. Think of him as the Mari Kondo of the demon world. Does this creepy, rattling murderer fill me with joy? Nah, decapitated. But even when he kills demons, his ultimate goal is to set them free, which is why I think he'd have a stand with healing powers. And that's not unheard of. I mean, Josuke's crazy diamond could heal people and even repair broken objects. Tanjiro's stand, TLC, would be a lot like that, except it wouldn't have to punch things first. If anything, it would be closer to the healing abilities of Giorno Giovanna's stand, gold experience. My boy. TLC draws from Tanjiro's water style. Just like Gara kept sand in a gourd on his back, Tanjiro carries TLC in a barrel. After carrying Nezuko for so long, a stand is no big deal. This watery stand is able to rapidly heal injuries and cure sickness by swaddling them. It's like every hug is a rejuvenating bath. Like if Tanjiro found Zenitsu when he was turning into a spider, his stand could have just healed him on the spot. Unfortunately, even TLC can't turn Nezuko back into a human. Not yet, at least. Is that the Requiem? Is it Requiem stands? Where we like, was saying, we didn't talk about it here, but like, there's a plug for future video. <laughs> Even though Tanjiro's kind hearted, he has no reservations about killing some demons. However, he does determine how he kills them. Remember when Tanjiro used Breath of the Water fifth style, blessed rain after the drought? Just like that, TLC can kill or incapacitate its enemies without any pain at all using its special move, No Scrubs. <laughs> Oh my god, I love that. Oh, Scrubs. You know that song? No, I don't. What? Dun, 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 nah, that's a banger. Yeah, 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 I like that. I like that, I like that. The stand surrounds the victim's head in water, giving them a sense of peace as they drown. Yeah, it's a little dark, but they don't feel any sense of panic but not every enemy is so lucky. Tanjiro has a powerful sense of smell, so TLC also needs a good nose too. That's how it determines whether or not to have mercy on its opponents. It can literally smell evil intentions. It's basically like if the menacing kanji were stink lines. If TLC catches even the slightest whiff of menacing, then Tanjiro knows not to hold back. When TLC's move Waterfalls is activated, its water can be used like a power washer to scrub away even the toughest demon scum. And then like, that's an advertisement. <laughs> Water Lake, even the toughest of demon scum. Yeah, like, like we scrub these away. For the record, we have seen Tanjiro use a fire ability, but that might be something we save for TLC Requiem. In the meantime, let's go on to Tanjiro's sister, Nezuko. So we've only seen a glimpse of Nezuko's power so far in the Demon Slayer anime. She can ignite her blood, change her size, and can apparently play on a pro soccer team. Still, even though she's a demon, she cares for Tanjiro and all humans like her family. Well, I mean, Rokodaki hypnotized her to be like that, but, but at this point I'm just splitting hairs. Our undisputed best girl already has demon powers, and her stand ability, Family Stone, is the natural extension of them. Nezuko may have retained many human qualities, but her stand puts her demonic strength on display. Y'all remember the Angelo Stone from part four? Yeah, it's that, but with an anime girl face, because I know what you people want, and it's disgusting. <laughs> does it come off as like super hate? No, it, it, it's a meme, it's a meme, it's a joke. Don't get mad or flame me in the comments. My self-esteem is very low. Family Stone isn't just a meme for a new generation of JoJo's fans. It's also an ass kicking machine. Nezuko carries this bound stand with her at all times. So it's convenient that Family Stone can alter its size just like Nezuko. It can be as small as a pebble you'd put in your pocket or as large as a thwomp. It can also transform at will. So if you pick up the Family Stone in pebble form, you might find yourself trapped under a giant and boulder. It works sort of like Koichi's Echoes Act 3. If it's lucky, Family Stone can pin down even the scrappiest enemy through sheer force of gravity. But ah, Family Stone's abilities don't stop there. It can use Nezuko's blood demon art and produces explosive blood if Nezuko squeezes it. The smaller Family Stone is when Nezuko squeezes it, the less blood it produces. But like Nezuko, Family Stone can't hurt humans, which is both a blessing and a curse. There are a lot of humans out there who deserve to be trapped under a giant anime girl looking stone. In fact, there are a lot of humans who would pay good money for that privilege. Uh, not me, I promise. 
<laughs> Still, Nezuko has some of Tanjiro's good boy energy, so she and her stan are dedicated to taking out demons exclusively. Nezuko and Tanjiro can even combine their best girl and good boy energies for a devastating team up. When Nezuko squeezes blood from Family Stone, she can only really splash it at her opponents. But because it doesn't hurt humans, the blood from her stand can actually mix with TLC's water without hurting Tanjiro. With explosive demon blood swirling inside of it, TLC becomes that much more powerful. Aside from not being able to hurt humans, Family Stone's most obvious weakness is that it's a bound stand. Nezuko needs to be near it to get the most out of its powers. Thankfully, the stone is always drawn to her, so even if they get separated, her stand will always find its way back to Nezuko. It's like how Rolling Stone would just randomly appear in part five. It has a mind of its own. Nezuko and Tanjiro make a powerful duo, but they've got another member of their squad who's a little less intimidating. Well, until he activates his stand. So Zenitsu is usually too afraid to fight his own battles, so a stand is perfect for him. It seems he's only willing to fight on two conditions. One, he passes out from fear and his subconscious takes over, and two, when there's a chance to even come near a girl. Like when he first saw Nezuko, that's the most aggressive Zenitsu has probably ever been. And he was suddenly real fired up for rehabilitation training once he found out there were girls there. From the get go, you could probably guess that Zenitsu has a long range stand. Anything to avoid danger, right? While Zenitsu is hiding under a blanket somewhere, his stand, Thunder Road, is zipping around like lightning. Actually, it's a lot like Red Hot Chili Pepper from part four. Thing is, Thunder Road doesn't need source of electricity to stay in the action. That'd be a pretty crippling ability in, you know, Japan Taisho period. Zenitsu Stan can just fly around on its little sparrow wings. Zenitsu Stan is pretty weak and will avoid combat if it can help it. However, just like Zenitsu, if it spots the opportunity to show off for a girl, then it'll get supercharged. Those puny sparrow wings explode into the glorious golden wings of an eagle, and everything from the stand's speed to its power gets a massive boost. Like if Zenitsu was in Passion, the boss would have had his daughter back in a heartbeat. He just sends Zenitsu in and he'd catch Trish no problem. That's thanks to the real way his stand uses electricity to paralyze his opponents, usually with a kiss. If Thunder Road plants one on its foe, they'll get a shock to their system and be rendered completely immobilized. It doesn't have to be in its supercharged state either. Thunder Road can pick its opponents off one by one, swooping in, landing a kiss, and thunder clapping and flashing out of there before anyone can lay a finger on it. As powerful as it can be, Thunder Road has a few notable weaknesses. I mean, it is Zenitsu's stand, right? The most obvious one is the whole, I'm too afraid to fight thing. Up against Bucciarati's crew, Zenitsu could probably hold his own as long as Trish was there but he's got zero chance if he's squaring up against the bros of the Stardust Crusaders. All dudes. <laughs> he has to heavily rely on hit and run tactics, and even that has its risks. When Thunder Road attacks, there's always a bright flash and a loud thundering boom. It's constantly giving away its position, so stealth isn't really in the cards. Maybe that'll give Zenitsu the nudge he needs to stand and fight once in a while. I get it, stand. Ah, you ruined it. <laughs> Thanks. We don't need to put that in, Jacob. Don't put that in. Put it in. No. Put it in now. No. Everyone needs to know that no. he's like the worst here. So Tanjiro fights for his sister. Zenitsu fights only if he has to, but Inosuke fights to test his strength. He acts and eats like a caveman, basically because he is one. His original mother abandoned him, leaving him to survive up in the mountains. Inosuke trained himself to become a powerful warrior. Wario. Wario! Inosuke trained himself to become a powerful warrior, but he always feels the need to prove his abilities both to himself and others. Unlike his fellow demon slayers, Inosuke's stand, Pork Soda, is about raw, brute strength. There isn't much tact to his fighting style. Inosuke just charges in with his stand to overpower his opponents. Obviously, Pork Soda is a close range stand, but it uses that close range to its advantage. Instead of only throwing punches and kicks, Inosuke's stand is an out and out grappler. In his fight with Tanjiro, he basically swung around him and tossed him to the ground. With Inosuke Inosuke's flexibility, his stand can wrap itself around its opponent's joints, locking them into position. Also, Pork Soda is going to be shorter than your regular stand, because Inosuke fights low. Also, he has a Napoleon complex, so I think that tracks. Putting someone in a full Nelson is bad enough, but Pork Soda doesn't stop there. The stand's arms and legs are serrated, just like the chips in Inosuke's swords. So getting grappled by this thing would be like being wrapped in barbed wire. But it gets even worse. Inosuke thrives on encouragement. If his opponent lets on that they're losing and in pain, Pork Soda gets a boost in confidence and clutches them even tighter. Of course, this only works if Inosuke can get close to his foe. You can try running and hiding, but Pork Soda can use echolocation to find you. 
It's a lot like Inosuke's spatial awareness technique. Instead of concentrating and feeling the vibrations of the air like Inosuke, Pork Soda lets out a colossal, disgusting belch. The sound of the belch travels through the air, and Inosuke gets a read on everything moving around. Think Aerosmith, but more disgusting. Close range stands all have that two meter weakness, but Inosuke's comes with a whole other set of problems. See, Inosuke's fighting spirit is so strong that he'll lose control of Pork Soda if its bloodthirst outpaces his own. Like actual boars, Pork Soda can't stop once it's enraged. So even if Inosuke is on the verge of death, his stand will keep fighting with reckless abandon. So we've been talking all about the Demon Slayer core members, but we've been leaving the demons totally defenseless themselves. So uh, we're gonna give stands to them, specifically the super creepy spider dude, uh, Rui. We only got to see Rui in action for a little bit. Even then he had his family doing a lot of the fighting for him. Sure, he had a change of heart in his final moments, literally, as he was dying. But as long as he was a demon, he was cold, cruel, and sadistic. He would surround himself with fellow demons to fill the hole in his heart and just as quickly destroy them if they defied him. So spiders are Rui's thing, so you know his stand is gonna have all kinds of spider powers. Cradle of Filth can spin tons of razor sharp web that can slice Rui's enemies to ribbons. And just like Rui's blood demon art, his stand can trap enemies in a cage of webs with no way to escape. But Cradle of Filth only fights as a last resort. The true power of a stand is that it can create a small group of spider thralls. Rui can turn normal demons into spider-like creatures like him. So his stand can do the same thing. It just takes a little longer. And all the webs that Cradle of Filth makes are deadly razor wire. The stand can leave webs that trap enemies and keep them alive. From there, the enemy gets wrapped into a pod like the one Rui's sister used. But instead of just getting melted away by acid, the victims hatched from the pod, were born as a member of Rui's spider family. Their abilities stay the same, but their appearance completely changes. Like picture Kakuin with a disgusting spider face like Rui's dad. Rui's pod puppets will completely do his bidding, but will still have full cognitive function and the use of their stance. They're basically hypnotized into thinking protecting Rui is the best thing that they can do in their life. Kind of like how Dio turned Kakuin and Polnareff into honorary vampires with those little flesh pods. And freeing people from Rui's control is just as simple. But simple, not not easy. You still have to deal with Spider Kakuin's Hierophant Green, and no one can deflect the Emerald Splash. And oh yeah, that's assuming you're strong enough to survive the transformations. Stan users will get the little flesh pod, but regular Joes like you and me will just turn into mindless, bloodthirsty spider zombies like those creepy little heads Zenitsu had to deal with. Those were fing weird. The flesh pods are a mild weakness, but Cradle of Filth would struggle against more perceptive opponents. You can't get caught in a trap if you already know it's there, right? Well, at least Rui's stand can use its razor webs to pressure enemies into his trap if they don't get caught in his web from the get-go. And I am now fearful because I think I just made him too powerful. Uh, so next, uh, let's, let's talk about Shinobu. Shinobu isn't strong enough to decapitate a demon on her own. She's still more than capable of destroying them. She compensates for her lack of strength with a special wisteria poison on her sword. Shinobu knows more than poison though. She knows a ton about medicine in general. She even saves Zenitsu from turning into a spider. On the surface, she's kind and compassionate until a demon crosses her path. In that case, she's absolutely ruthless and even enjoys torturing them. Just like Rui loves his spiders, Shinobu loves her butterflies. Her stand, Toxic, has beautiful butterfly wings that it uses to fly. It can gracefully float around or it can dart through the air at blistering speeds. As the insect pillar, Shinobu is the fastest. Her pharmaceutical knowledge is closely tied to her fighting style, so her stand is able to deliver all kinds of toxins. For one thing, Toxic is always surrounded by an ominous cloud of gas. It's like a prettier version of Purple Haze from part five. If an enemy inhales the gas, it will sting their eyes and throat, making them an easy target for Toxic's main form of attack, its needles. Toxic has what looks like a hypodermic needle on the ends of its fingers. When it stabs an opponent with a needle, it quickly releases a poison into its bloodstream. Different fingers have different medicines inside that have varying effects. Some fingers deliver a deadly toxin that works like the wisteria poison on demons. It starts corroding them from the inside out. Others can immobilize enemies with a paralyzing toxin, but Shinobu's not all bad. Other fingers are able to heal her allies with a rejuvenating medicine. It's kind of like how Kurapika's finger chains all have different powers in Hunter x Hunter. The stand already sounds super powerful, but it does have a glaring weakness. Toxic's poisons don't immediately take effect. But here's where Shinobu's sadism comes into play. Just like her, her stand has two different faces. One is kind and warm, and the other is twisted 
and horrifying. We got to see how terrifying Shinobu can be when she tortured the spider sister. Toxic switches to its terrible face to scare its enemies and raise their heart rate. It can even disappear into its own smoke and jump back out for a surprise attack. When the victim's heart beats faster, the poison works its way through their body more rapidly. You would need nerves of steel to fight against this stand. Uh, so Jotaro won't have too many problems. He can even use Star Platinum to stop his heart just like he did in his fight against Dio. But for everyone else, uh, probably not the best matchup. We've only seen one season of Demon Slayer so far, so I know there's plenty more stands to be made. Like what about Gyu Tomioka or the big bad Kibutsuji Muzan? Even the main characters have some room to grow, so maybe we'll get a few Requiems. Anyway, those are the stands we made, but what would y'all do? Let me know in the comments. I'm Kurt, this is Gin the Robot. It's comfy in here. Thank you.